Hi there, I'm Joey. I'm Jacob. And we are watching Star Trek for the first time. Last time on Star Trek, we got a glimpse of the future. And people got old, and it was, it was alright. <laughs> and there was, what, maybe five casualties we saw on screen because of old mess? Not even. No, I think it was more than... Well, I guess, oh no, because there was a crew down there. Three, four, I think. Four altogether, I want to say. Probably more, as well. That's why, my, that's why I want to say five. Anyway. Not important! Today we're watching an episode called Obsession. Oh. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's find out, I guess. <laughs> right? I, I mean, know. this <laughs> means could be literally anything. Yeah, it could be cool. All right, we're going to get into post-episode thoughts in a second. Be sure to join us then. We are about to watch Obsession. All right, so that was Obsession. And that was pretty fucking awesome, that actually. Was, I, yeah. <laughs> I really yeah, really it was a really it. good episode, actually. Yeah, yeah, that was great. A lot of red shirts. A lot of red shirts that went down. Um, I thought it was five. I, I think five would have pushed it into like one of the higher numbers, but four, I think, is kind of standard. Well, there was four on-screen deaths, one technically happened well, actually, off-screen. Yeah, one of them happened off-screen, because he died in the medical uh, bed. But, right. Uh, and there was at least t two confirmed deaths later on in the episode, both not necessarily red shirts. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know, uh, just, whatever. It's just kind of funny. Um, a lot of red shirts, there's a whole scene where, like, Kirk brings, like, an army of red shirts down with him to the planet. And, yeah. Uh, only one of them dies, which I, I think is impressive. So, hey, there's that. Um, but overall, yeah, I really like this. I love, like, episodes where we actually take Kirk's character and do something a bit more interesting than, like, oh yeah, he's the strong, fearless leader kind right. of thing. Um, because we delve into, like, his past here. We, we learned that 11 years ago he was on this, uh, this ship called Farragate. Yeah, right? Farragate. I didn't write that one down in my notes. But, um... He was on the ship, it was his first, like, actual, like, mission that he was on. And they came across this creature, his captain died, half the crew died, they say. Um, and, uh, it, 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 you feel like, because the idea is that we come across that same creature here, um, you feel that, like, like Kirk, like, feels like this obligation to, like, fight this thing and to take it on and to do whatever he can to, to stop it from killing anyone else that he cares about. Right. Um, but he's already technically failed at if you count, if you count the crew as, if you count all 400-some members of the crew as people he cares about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, I just really, really loved that. I thought that was fascinating. Um, Plus, I like learning more about his personal history. Yeah, oh, I find yeah. it incredibly fascinating to learn the career of James T. Kirk. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly done through this character called Garavik. Uh, Ensign Garavik joins the crew in this. I kind of wish we had seen Garavik before so that we had like a bit more of like a connection to his character, you know? He's also um, introduced like a villain for some reason. He is! He walks onto the bridge and they like zoom in on him like he's a bad guy. I'm like, alright. And sure. there's also this musical Whatever. sting that like indicates that maybe something isn't all here for. Yeah, but no, he's important. Yeah, no, he's like he, a good guy. He's important. He goes up to Kirk and, you know, and Kirk is like, okay, we want to have like a chance to like, you know, kill the thing that killed uh, your, your, your friend over there in, in the sick bay. Um, and, uh, and so... We learn later on that Garavik is the son of the captain that died on that mission 11 years ago. Um, Adding a whole other dimension yeah, to yeah. the urgency going on here. Obviously, many, many years before either of the films, but I, I thought of a uh, Top Gun Maverick here, <laughs> probably because it's just fresh <laughs> in my mind, and, you know, whatever. Fresh in my mind at the time of recording. This is probably when top, people are done talk, talking about Top Gun Maverick, but whatever. Anyway, so Kirk feels like some obligation to, to, uh, to Garavik. Um, that, like, you know, like, when Garavik makes sort of, sort of the same mistake that he did when he, like, hesitates in shooting the creature, he's, like, he gets Garavik completely off the mission altogether, he sends him to his quarters, says, you know, like, like just stay there, don't come out, whatever. Um, right. He is, a, he is essentially grounded. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I don't know, I just, I just really like that. I, I, I just like actually seeing faults in Kirk is a, is a big win for us. Yeah. <laughs> so. I like, especially, uh, given, like, g given some of the past episodes where Kirk is shown as why he's the protagonist of the show. Not even the captain, the protagonist. Yeah, just the protagonist of the show. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, this is another good episode to show why he is, in fact, the protagonist, but in a very different way. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um... Couple, a couple fun things in this episode as well. Um, first off, I do want to mention that, it, just a fun thing while we were watching the episode, um, there came a point where, uh, when I was like, oh man, you know what, they called over to check off earlier, but we haven't actually seen him. We were good like 20 minutes into the episode, yeah. and then <laughs> later on in the bridge, like not, e not even a full minute after I said it, check off showed up. I'm like, okay, well, there he is. There's oh, check off. There's check off. Uh, <laughs> thought that was funny. Um, we also had some more uh, Nurse Chapel in this episode, mm -hmm. who had like one of her best moments ever so far. I really loved this scene where um, where she goes to Garavik, uh, when he's uh, when he's like uh, told to stay in his quarters. She brings him some food, delivers some wine 
wisecracks for some reason, and David, and he's like, oh, I'm not gonna eat, and, and she's like, well, dear, uh, these are your order, this is your prescription from Dr. McCoy, all it says is eat. Um, so you, so you can either do that, or he's gonna take you to the sick bay and force you to eat. Oh, um, he can and would feed you intravenously. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> funny. Um, and, uh, and then she comes back to, to McCoy's office and, uh, and she puts down the little disc thing and McCoy's like, well, what's that? It's not, it's not an order or whatever. And, and, um, It's some survey of yeah, something. Yeah. And, she, uh, and, and she, we learned that she just fucking, like, like, tricked, uh, Garavik into eating. And I, I don't know. It was, it was really funny. It was great. Um, speaking of, though, we gotta talk about this because this is actually an episode, a bit, bit of the episode that confused me. Um... Uh, when we see Garavik like going to eating, he he picks up the 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 cover for the for the dish and like throws it at the wall and it hits this switch that goes from active to bypass. And, and we weren't sure what that did. <laughs> yeah, because immediately afterwards, like he hears a communication that like, everyone to battle stations. Um, but he, later on, I'm assuming it's meant to be like the vent opened up. But also, you had a theory, and they never developed on this that like, well, what if him hitting bypass is what caused the creature to be able to get into the ventilation system? That's what I was thinking. I I, th I had two thoughts. I I thought I th I personally thought it meant both that mm -hmm. like it opened the ventilation system. Period. Mm -hmm. Like and that's how the creature could have got in yeah. total, or it or as or it's. But I definitely think I'm right on this part two. And part two of my idea that he opened the vent in his room, mm -hmm. and that's the only vent he opened. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how the creature gets in and attacks uh, him and Spock when mm -hmm. Spock comes in to see him, basically telling him the same thing he told uh, Kirk like two minutes earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I don't know. I just wonder. But just. An odd aspect of the episode. Um, a little. It's not obvious what happened yeah. initially as a thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great stuff. Um, they start like chasing down the creature. Um, eventually, Garavik gets involved. Um, we had some great scenes also before that where, um, where like Spock and McCoy um, sort of just like just talk Kirk into like just not blaming himself as much, you know? Because because mm -hmm. like Kirk, Kirk almost like he's charged in this episode by, by a sort of survivor's guilt. Um, but also mostly that, that, that he's failed his, um, his, his crew in the past. Um, he doesn't want that to happen again. Specifically because Garavik does get involved in fighting the creature. Um, and they eventually do. Um, there's almost this moment where you think that Garavik is going to like sacrifice himself to the creature when they're down on the planet. Right. And it's like, okay, I don't know what that would actually accomplish on a story level. Because like... I don't know, why would we leave the episode with Kirk letting another Garavik die? Right, exactly. <laughs> that makes no <laughs> sense, but whatever. I mean, I don't know. I get the fake outs there, I guess. Um, I mean, the episode, and the episode on this really nice note um, of Kirk saying, like, you know, afterwards, you know, Garavik, come to my quarters, I'll, I'll tell you some stories about your father. And I don't know, it's just, just a great little note to end the episode on. I thought mm -hmm. it was awesome. It was. Um, this is a great episode overall, though. I it's really a good little this. personal story for Kirk. Mm -hmm. It's a good larger episode for their characters oh totally yeah i loved this this was this was and then awesome. again it shows um something i know we've talked about before but the cabinet of officers in kirk's immediate circle yeah and how you know when they need to work off each other they do and when they need to work together they do in, in like perfect harmony mm -hmm. oh totally yeah um yeah great episode really great episode um I guess that about does it. Uh, be sure to join us next week when we continue Star Trek The Original Series. Until then, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye.